a church that promotes the bond of unity among diversity. A church that serves all generations. A church that values the family. A church that lifts praises to God. A church that elevates your destiny and not your history. A church that teaches God's Word. A church that builds relationships through fellowship. A church that's excited about meeting you. Good afternoon, everybody. Is Wednesday night Bible study time at Great Commission Ministries, and uh, once again, we are, as you can tell, we're sitting down, and that means that we're going to have some more rounds table discussion tonight. We had a lot of great feedback on that on last evening, and uh, we have a different guest with us tonight. Last week, we had Brother Byron Wright with us, um, and we definitely enjoyed having him, and but tonight we got another guest. We'll introduce that guest to you in just a few moments of time. Um, but I want to kind of set the stage for the night. Um, we're going to um, share some things from our hearts to you, hopefully to be encouragement to you. But then at the end, if we have time, I thought that we would uh, take some questions and answers. So if you have a question, um, and uh, we'll attempt to answer it. And if you have a question, if you just put it there in the comments, Pastor Curtis will get those questions, and uh, he'll be trying to relay them over to us toward the end. Those questions can be uh, hopefully not something too deep, uh, something too serious, um, just, just good old questions you'd like to ask, ask us. Um, so I think what I would do before we go to the Lord in prayer is so that that, that would make more sense of why I'm giving us a chance to do questions and answers is because the guest tonight is my wife and your first lady. So we're very excited to have first lady with us tonight. I really felt in my heart what I wanted to get accomplished tonight was to uh, allow myself, pastor, and the first lady of the house, both of us come together tonight and just share with you um, some things that's in our heart in regard to some words of encouragement during this time. And I just want you to know before we go to prayer here is that First Lady and myself, we desperately, dearly miss you guys. I can't tell you how much we miss you guys. I, I appreciate the opportunity of being maybe a, quote, a televangelist now, but uh, I'm not sure if I'm being called to be a televangelist or not. I, I miss my people as um, far as pastoring. I can't get these chairs to say amen. I can't get these chairs to say hallelujah. I can't get them to do nothing. These chairs are just cold. They are just cold. And I need my people back in them. So anyhow, we love you and we do miss you very much so. So going back to the questions and answers. So if there's a question that you would like to ask First Lady or myself about us personally um, or something about the Bible, whatever, um, if you just want to know something about us, our families, um, we'll definitely try to answer some of those toward the end of the service tonight. But let us just begin with prayer, and then we'll, we'll go into uh, that which the Lord has shared in our hearts tonight. Let us pray. Father, we thank you tonight for the privilege of getting together once again with your people. God, to just study your word, to open up the word of God, to speak, let it speak to us. And as you have spoken to us, now let us, let us allow it to speak to the people of God tonight. We thank you, dear Lord, for every person that is in attendance tonight, God. We thank you, dear Lord, for their faithfulness. May not be able to be in the, in the house, but they are faithful. And I thank you for their faithfulness tonight. And we pray now, Holy Spirit, that you would anoint this time together as First Lady and myself. So open up your word in our hearts to speak into the people of God tonight. We thank you for what you're doing for us in the midst of this crisis, God. We declare that we are victorious, God, in this. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Well, like I said, tonight my heart's desire uh, is to let us 
your pastor and first lady just to share our hearts with us tonight uh, from the Word of God um, or possibly not so much from Scripture, but possibly from Scripture, but just want to share our hearts to you and let you know um, that we believe in you, we are praying for you, and with God's help, we're all going to get through this victorious. So I asked, I asked First Lady, I didn't tell her what to talk about, I didn't give her no guidance, I didn't give her any outlines or anything like that. I said, I just want us to get together tonight and just share um, some encouragement to the people. And uh, so I'm interested to myself to see what the Lord has given to her to share with us. So I'm going to give this time over to her. And however much time that she needs, she can have. And whatever is left over, I'll take some left over. Um, and then at the end, if we have any opportunity, we'll definitely give you some chance of questions and answers. So I'm now going to give the, the floor or the table to our first lady and won't you give her a big uh, clap offering on your comments there. Let, you, let her know how much you appreciate our First Lady um, so very much. So here, here you are, sweetie. Well, thank you, Pastor, first of all, for the privilege to be here. But I want to tell all of the GCM body, hello, hello, hello. And I miss you desperately. I cannot wait to see you and hug you and love on you. Um, so it's an honor just to be able to be here tonight to, to just speak my heart to you. I've been singing to you every Sunday, but it's nice to just share my heart. And I hope that what I share tonight will be some strength and encouragement to you. I feel like we're definitely in a time that we need a lot of strength. We need a lot of encouragement. We need a lot of hope in this day and hour. So as I was praying and thinking about what I wanted to share with you tonight, it's like the Lord dropped three R's into my spirit. And um, I want to share those R's with you tonight. The first R that the Lord gave me was for the word return. Um, for the last couple of weeks, the, this scripture out of Revelation about returning to our first love has just been ringing over and over in my heart. And whenever he gave me the word return, that is the first scripture that came to mind, and you may wonder how in the world is, is that encouragement when you read the scripture, but I want to express to you tonight where I'm coming from with that, and it's from Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 through 5, and I want to read it to you out of the Amplified Version tonight, and it says, but I have this charge against you that you have left your first love, you have lost the depth of love that you first had for me. So remember the heights from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior. Seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand, which is the church, its impact from its place unless you repent. You're probably thinking, how in the world is that scripture encouraging? Well... I want to tell you tonight, as I was thinking about this, there's one thing I believe that COVID-19 has brought about that I feel like is a very positive thing. And the first of that is it's given us time to really begin to focus on what's important in life. And there's absolutely nothing more important than Jesus Christ, Amen. the lover of our soul, the one that first loved us, the one that rescued us out of darkness and brought us into his marvelous light. And sometimes when you've been in a relationship with the Lord for a long time or even just a short period of time, distractions come into your life, things come into your life sometimes that can separate you or create a gap between you and the lover of your soul, the one that loves you more than anybody in this world. And we get so caught up in what's going on, and I, number one, was guilty of that. seems like life just gets so busy sometimes, and you just get caught up in the things of life. And, and I feel like God is saying in this day and hour, because if I ever feel that we have been living in the last days, we're living there now. You know, as a little girl, I heard that all of my life, that he's soon returning, that the Lord is soon coming back. Well, I believe that with all of my heart today. We Amen. are there. God is soon returning. And what I get with that word about returning to him, he wants his bride, which is the church, to look back to their first love, to look away from all of the other loves that have been distracting you and have been pulling you away from him because that's what Amen. the enemy's been trying to do. He's been trying to 
take our attention off of what is most important in life, that we'll be looking at other things that we won't be watching and waiting for the return of the Lord. But I believe he's got us in that final dressing room to where he's saying, hey, come back to me. Come back to me. Amen. Examine your life. Examine your heart and return to the things that you did at first when you first fell in love with me. Do you remember what it felt like when you first fell in love with the Lord, when he saved your soul? Oh, how excited we were, how we couldn't wait to tell people about Jesus. Well, he wants us to return to that same excitement Amen. in our life and begin to share that joy with those that are around us that we can help reap the harvest and get a harvest ready for his return. Because a great revival, I do believe, is about to break forth. And Christ is wanting to get as many ready as he possibly can for his return. So that is where I feel that he was telling us with, with the R. Come on, just return back to your first love. Yes. The second R that I want to share with you tonight is to remember. I want us to remember the goodness of the Lord and truly develop a heart of gratitude and a heart of thankfulness. You know, when things aren't exactly right in our lives, Pastor, sometimes we can get an attitude of grumbling and murmuring and, and complaining and so easy to find things that are is not right in life, especially in the midst of this crisis. I, I miss convenience. I miss being able to just go to a restaurant and sit down or just be able to go come to church on a normal Sunday and see people. <laughs> yes. It just feels like my freedoms have been completely taken from me and you don't realize what you take for granted. Just the gathering in the church house is, is something that I think has been so easily taken for granted and I miss that and I didn't realize how much I missed it until we hadn't been able to That's everybody right. come together. But I want us to remember the goodness of the Lord and the scriptures that he gave me with that. I'm going to give you scriptures with each R. And these two, I think, are just powerful scriptures on the goodness of the Lord. And the first one is from Nahum 1 and 7. And it says, The Lord is good. He is a strength and a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows, he recognizes, cares for, and understands fully those who take refuge and trust Amen. in him. He is a strength and a stronghold to you tonight. So keep holding on to him. Keep drawing from his strength by remembering his goodness. Remember all the good things that he's done for us. Then Psalm 145 and 7 says, I love this one. It says, they will overflow like a fountain when they speak of your, which is God's, great and abundant goodness, and they will sing joyfully of your righteousness. He's telling us right there that we will overflow like a fountain when we begin to speak of his goodness. Amen. And that's what I want to do. I want the goodness of the Lord to just flow out of me like rivers of living water that when people see and hear my voice, that they hear encouragement, they hear strength. Right. There's so much negative around us, and we as the children of God need to be declaring his goodness and his greatness and how awesome and how powerful and magnificent he is and how good he has been to us even in the midst of trouble. Amen. He's a stronghold and a strength to us tonight. And the last star that he gave me was rejoice. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, rejoice in the midst of trouble? Yeah, that's when we should rejoice all the more. Paul did in prison when he was in the midst of, of, of prison and being locked up and being beaten and being Lord knows what. I can't imagine what he must have been going through. But he said to rejoice, and again I say rejoice. And tonight, that's not the scripture the Lord gave me, but the scripture that he gave me for rejoice is this one from Romans 5, 3 through 4. And it says this, And not only this, but with joy, let us exult in our sufferings and rejoice in our hardship, knowing that hardships, which is distress, pressure, trouble, produces patient endurance, and endurance, proven character, and proven character, which is nothing more than spiritual maturity, produces hope and confident assurance of eternal salvation. And then he goes on to say in that verse 5, he says, such hope in God's promises will never disappoint us. Amen. So God will never disappoint us. His promises are yes and amen. 
And then Zephaniah 3 and 14 through 17 says this. I want to encourage you tonight to begin to shout for joy in the midst of this trial. Shout for joy, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O Israel. Rejoice in high spirits and glory with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem, in that day. For the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, even the Lord himself, is in your midst. You will no longer fear disaster. And in that day, it will be said to Jerusalem, Do not be afraid, O Zion, and do not let your hands fall limp. So go ahead, church. Just shout for joy. Amen. Sing for joy. Because the Lord is in the midst of us. No matter what the world is trying to portray in all of this negativity and with COVID-19 and, and this and that and the other, seems like they're trying to give us all the negative. But I want you to know tonight that the Lord is faithful yes, to His is. promises Praise and God. He wants you to shout for joy tonight, yes. to declare His goodness and to remember His love for you. The Lord your God is in the midst. He is a warrior who saves. I didn't finish reading that verse. And he will rejoice over you with joy. He will be quiet in his love, making no mention of your past sins. He will rejoice over you with shouts of joy. The Lord himself is singing over you tonight with joy. Praise you may God. feel discouraged. You may feel defeated. But I want you to know he is singing over you with great shouts of joy tonight. So you be encouraged to know that he is for you. He is not against you, but he is for you. And the last scripture I want to share because this one has been in my heart, and I feel like this is what God wants us to do in this last day. Because as I told you a few minutes ago, he's soon returning. Yes. He's getting ready to come back. So he's telling you right now to arise and shine. We all know the scripture, six, Isaiah 61 and 2. It says, arise. I love how the Amplified puts it. From spiritual depression to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. For your light has come and the glory and brilliance of the Lord has risen upon you. For in fact, darkness will cover the earth. And boy, are we there right now in darkness. And it says deep darkness will cover God's people. But, he I says, the Lord will rise upon yes. you, Praise he God. said. And his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. That's encouraging. God is challenging us tonight to arise and shine. Let our light so shine for him that others may see his good works in our life. That they may know there is a great God in Zion who is able to do exceedingly abundantly and above anything we could ask, think, or imagine. He wants to wet, ransom his bride. Yes. He's getting ready to come back and take us home. And it's our job as his children to get as many ready because as Pastor and Brother Byron said last week, he's already done all he's going to do. He's finished. The only thing he's waiting on is to come back. Yes. And he's coming back for a bride without spot, without blemish. Our job is to get in the harvest field and to get busy. We can't do that gloomy and down and out without the joy of the Lord. But arise and shine that they can see his goodness upon us. And that they would be drawn to the Lord. Because if you go on and read Isaiah 60, it says that the daughters of Zion, they'll be brought to you. They'll come to you. The ships of wealth will be coming to you. Church, they're going to look to us for hope. They're going to be looking to us for answers. Yes. And I want to make sure that I've got an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying in the last days. So let's return to the Lord, to our first love. Let's remember His goodness and let's rejoice for the goodness of the Lord and all that He's done for us because He's soon coming back and that's a lot to be happy about. Well, praise the Lord, Pastor. I'm going to give it wow. to you. <laughs> wow. I, we might just need to cut it off right there. Uh, that, was, that was absolutely awesome. Thank you so, so very much. I don't know how you can see or how you can feel there at the home, but uh, she was struggling sitting in that chair. Um, she was wanting to arise out of that chair. She was getting happy, but, um, oh, wow, that's just awesome. May we remember uh, what she said to us. And, by the way, I love these same letters, too. Um, so the first one is to re, um, 
return, return back to our first love. Let's take this time and not let it push us away from God, but let's let it push us to God. Okay, so return to our first love, and then let's remember. Remember the goodness of the Lord. Oh, we are surrounded by a lot of negative right now, but there's also a lot of goodness of the Lord. Surely goodness and mercy has followed us all the day. Amen. And then number three, let's rejoice. Let's give God praise. Let's rejoice in the midst of this storm. Thank you so much. Oh, that was awesome. Thank you so, so very much. And I really am challenged right now whether or not I should move forward with mine or, or, or just let that be the, be the end tonight. And um, that was really powerful. So I, so I think I will take a few moments of time and they'll share my heart. That was what I asked her to do is to share her heart. And now I thought... I will take a few moments of time and share my heart of that which the Lord. And what I want to focus on for a few moments is Joshua chapter 1. Joshua chapter 1. Remember now Moses has died. Um, they have just come through the 30 day, uh, days of weeping and mourning, according to Deuteronomy, the last chapter there. And, and now God's stepping on the scene. And he's telling, talking, talking to Joshua. He's saying to Josh, Joshua, Okay, it's time, it's time to move forward. And, um, and he began to speak to Joshua. Uh, to this point, Joshua had been following Moses. And so this was a, a tremendous loss in Moses and Joshua's life. So I'm, I'm trying to make a, a, a set of stage here is that this was a tough time for Joshua, a very tough time, a challenging time. Uh, things uh, that were or are not no longer. And now he's having to move forward without, without Moses. And God began to speak to Joshua, and he said a lot of things, and I'm not going to read, read the whole chapter. But in verse 5 and verse 6, God begins to speak to Joshua. First of all, now he's already told him in verse 2, I want you to take the people across the Jordan River. But now here in verse 5, he says, There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, listen to that. He said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you, nor will I forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. I want to focus on that just for a few moments. So here in this time of Joshua in regard to just a negative time in his life, which is what First Lady was referencing, I almost, I'm almost ready to stop saying COVID-19. I'm just about getting to that point. I'm almost ready to change the subject a little bit, but we, but we got to stay relevant. And relevance right now is what we're dealing with. And, and so I'm not saying that Joshua was in a COVID-19 situation like we're in. I'm just saying this was a tough time for Joshua, just like it's a tough time for us. And a lot to what he was accustomed to is no, is no longer available to him, like a lot of what we were accustomed to at this time is not available to us, believe me, we'll get, we'll get back. And, and God gave him four quick instructions. In, in verse 1 and verse 2, he began to tell uh, Joshua, he said, now Moses is dead. He said, Moses is dead. I want you to take the people and go across the Jordan River. The first thing he told Moses to do is I want you to commit to your future. To commit to your future. What he was telling Joshua is what I want to tell us tonight. He was telling Joshua, Joshua, I want you to commit to your future. I don't want you to spend no more time focusing on the past or even the present situation. It's time to move forward. Amen. It's time to take the children of Israel across the Jordan River. And, and so what I want to say to us tonight is that our past and our present mm -hmm. is not what God has in store for us. It's our future. Amen. And I want to let you be encouraged tonight is to commit to the future. Moses is dead. Moses is dead. We're in a season of mourning right now, but we got to move forward. 
So realize this tonight in, in the words of encouragement, is that it's your future. Your future is bright. America, our future is bright. Local families, your future is bright. We're not going to stay in this weeping and mourning condition that we're in. We're going to go across the Jordan River, and we're going to inherit the, the land that God's promised to us. The next thing that he said to him was part of the verse that I read to you. So the first thing he said, I want you to commit to your future. The next thing he said, I want you to consider Moses. He said, consider Moses, Joshua. Consider Moses. And, and when I begin to think about Moses and the ministry of Moses and all that took place from the backside of the desert to, to him dying there in Moab is, is this. When I say consider Moses, he said, consider Moses as I was with Moses. That's powerful. As I was with Moses, so shall I be with you. So he said, commit to your future. Commit to your future. Because that's where your, your bright moments are. It's not now. It's not in your past. It's in front of you. And I, and I speak that tonight over us. Our brightness is in front of us. But then he said, as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. So I'm sure Joshua's mind began to just go through over and over and over how God was with Moses. And when I think about how God was with Moses in his time, Three things pop out. God's presence. As I was with Moses, God's presence. God was with Moses throughout the whole time, from the backside of the desert, right on through the plagues, right on through the grumbling and the murmuring, right on through the crossing of the road, just through every aspect, God was with him. And I want to encourage us tonight. God is with us tonight. God is not absence from us. He, he's, not, he's not away from us right now. God is with us, God's presence. And as I was with Moses, I began to think about not only God's presence, I was thinking about God's provision. How many times throughout the, the time of Moses that God did not provide? Provided water, provided manna, provided uh, uh, instructions, provided directions, I mean, just provided for Moses. And, and I want you to be encouraged tonight that God is our provider. And he is going to take care of us. He is going to make sure that everything that we need, he is going to make sure that we have it. Don't let all of this stuff that you're hearing about a shortage of food and we're not going to be able to get this, we're not going to be able to get that. Listen, I, I, I'm not trying to downplay anything of the seriousness of the COVID-19. But I'm trying to let you understand tonight is that God is our provider. And God will take care of us. If he'll take care of the sparrows, if he'll take care of the, of the grass on, on the ground, if he'll take care of the lilies in the field, he will take care of his children. So don't you go to bed tonight worried about your provisions because God will provide. So as I was with Moses, his presence, God's provision, and then also God's protection. God protected Moses throughout the whole time. God was, he was truly his refuge. He was truly his, his, his covering. And tonight, I want you to know tonight that God is our protection. God is our protection. And I declare over you, your family tonight, that COVID-19 will not attack your home in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I declare that over your life. I declare that over all the people of this church, over my immediate family, over your family, in the name of Jesus Christ, where you're living, COVID-19 will not enter. I declare that because God is our provider. So he said to him, commit to your future. Consider Moses. And he says, take courageous action. He said over and over and over, be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous. This is all, this is a sermon like she could have talked a long time. But courage, be courageous today. Be courageous today. What, what is courage? Number one, courage is a choice. You have to choose to be courageous. Either you're going to choose to be courageous or you're going to choose to melt down 
in spite of fear. So choose to be courageous. Now, also about courage, not only is it a choice, it's confrontational. Whenever I choose to be courageous, it's confrontational. When I say confrontational, it is a confrontation to my fear. It's a confrontation to my fear. And, and in, verse, uh, in verse 9, listen to what it says. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. So whenever you take on courage, when you choose courage, you are choosing to combat and to confront your fear. Amen. If you choose not to be courageous, then you are choosing to allow fear to overpower you. Choose to be courageous. It's not only confrontational, it's contagious. Courage is contagious. In verse 17, the people, Joshua gained courage. And he now began to speak to the people. This is what we're going to do. Get prepared. We're going to cross over. And in verse 17, according as we hearken unto Moses in all things, so we will hearken unto you, Joshua. Only the Lord thy God will be with us as, as he was with Moses. So the courage of Joshua began to become contagious to the people that was around him. So let me challenge you. Be courageous in your family. Be courageous in your community. Let it become contagious. Don't be the person out there that's sharing all the negative and all the pessimists and all the doom and gloom. You be courageous. Stand up and declare that as God was with Moses, he's going to be with us. He's going to, his presence is with us. His, his provisions is with us and also his protection. Be contagious through your courage and courage builds confidence and then the last thing he said to them was go across the Jordan River take the people and go across so today I challenge us with these words of hopefully of encouragement don't don't get committed to where we are don't get committed to the idea that I've heard people say, it's never going to be the same. Life going forward is never going to be the same, and it's never going to be as good. I come against that thought in the name of Jesus. My past and my present is not where my best is. God has a greater future in front of us. So commit to your future. Consider Moses, his presence, God's presence, God's provision, and God's protection. Be courageous. Be courageous. And lastly, cross over. Cross over. Go get what God's promised to you. Go become who God's called you to be. It's going to happen. God is on our side. And we're so excited about that. Hallelujah. So hopefully you got something of encouragement out of that. You want to yeah, I just want to, can I just close with a yeah. scripture? There was one that I had left out, but now I know why I left it out. So it's kind of tie, tying off what you just said. But the scripture from 2 Corinthians 4 and 17, when you were talking about how um, what we have right now is, you know, how it's going to be or it's not going to be any greater. I, I believe greater's coming. I Amen. think we're fixing to see eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God's getting ready to do. So I want to give you this scripture from 2 Corinthians 4 and 17. And church, it says this. It says, for our momentary light distress, this passing trouble, it, it's, it's going, it's, it's, it's passing, is producing for us an eternal weight of glory, a fullness beyond all measure, surpassing all comparison, a transcendent splendor, and endless blessedness. Greater is coming. Yes. Much greater Praise is God. coming. So you be encouraged tonight, no matter what it looks like right now. God's got so much greater in store than we, we can imagine. Praise awesome God. job, Pastor. Amen. Thank you. Praise Thank God. You. Praise God. So what, what I want to do now before we go to some questions and answers, we got uh, a few more moments um, before taking too much of your night. So if you haven't got a question in and you want to ask a question, put a question in the comments there. Pastor Curtis will be ready for us uh, to ask us those questions in a moment. But in addition to uh, asking First Lady to join with me tonight to share her heart, words of encouragement, and to me 
to share some words of encouragement from my heart as the pastor and the first lady of the house. I just want she and I to get together uh, and just pray for you and just lift you up tonight. We want you to know we love you. We, we, we just dearly love you, and we are so much um, anxiously waiting to get back together with you. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. When y'all come back in here, it's going to be a hard thing to be social distant. Um, I'm going to have to hug you um, and then spray you with Lysol, I guess. But uh, I, I got to get me a hug. I'm telling you, I am, I'm going through some DTs of some loving from my Great Commission Ministries family. But, and I also want to say thank you for all the support that you've given to me uh, and, and the teams of who's doing ministry, Pastor Heidi's. I'm doing a wonderful job trying to keep the children and the um, youth and uh, our praise and worship, our production. Your support has been priceless, and, uh, and we love you so very much. But let, let, let she and I spend a few moments of time here just, just praying for you. That'd be okay. All right. Dear Father, I thank you tonight for the words of encouragement, the words of strength that you've given to First Lady tonight. God, help us to return to you during this time. Lord, not run away from you, but to return to you, God. And help us today, God, to remember how good you are, how awesome you are, God. And let us rejoice in the Lord again. Hallelujah. For you are truly our strength. You are our help tonight in a very present time of trouble. Now, Father, we do come back to you. We return to you, and we remember the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. And we also say, we love you and we rejoice. And help us tonight, God, to do as you instructed Joshua, to commit to the future. To commit to the future. God, not our present and not our past, but let's commit to the future. Because the future is brighter than where we are and where we've come from. And Father, I thank you today, Lord, that we can consider Moses. We can consider him and, and, and remember your presence and remember your provision and remember your protection, God. Lord, I thank you for that tonight, God. And Lord, I pray for courageous, uh, courageous action. I pray, God, that we would be courageous, that we would not fall a prey to fear, but we would stand courageous tonight, that we would stand strong, God, and we would confront that fear, and we would con confront that negative and that concerns that the enemy is trying to place there, God. Let us be courageous so that we may become contagious to others around us, O oh God. And dear Lord, in the name of Jesus, help us to cross over. Help us to go to the other side from where we are, God. Now, Father, we lift up our people tonight. Lord, we pray for them, each and every one tonight, God, and their families. We pray for that husband, that wife, those children, God. We pray for their bodies, and we just declare tonight, God, that your protection is around them, God. We lift them up. I pray for the joy of the Lord to become their strength, God. I pray the peace that passes all understanding, God, would just overshadow them this evening, God. Let them rest in the hands of God. Lord, we just declare today, God, that, that they will walk in victory. They will walk in the fullness of joy, God. And the joy of the Lord shall become their strength, God. We declare tonight, Lord, that they are winners. They are winners, God. They are running to win. They're not going to lose, but they are going to win, God. They are overcomers. They are conquerors in the name of Jesus Christ, God. Now, Father, I thank you tonight for, for the people of God that you have placed, Lord, in my life through the Great Commission Ministries family. And we ask you now, Father, that you would just speak love and encouragement and hope in their life tonight, God, and let them feel not only your love, but let them feel the love of their pastor and first lady tonight. Because we truly, truly love them and miss them tonight, God. And we give you all the praise and, and all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Mm. I just feel his presence right here on the stage. Praise the Lord. So I'm a little bit nervous about this question and answer thing. Um, but if it's a question that we just don't want to answer, we'll say pass. And don't, don't you get offended by that. Um, so... Uh, Pastor Curtis, do we have any questions as of yet? Let's see here what he's got coming to us. He's getting one. He's reading one now.
What can we do to help strengthen our faith during these times? So the question is, what can we do to help strengthen our faith during these times? You want to you wanna start and I'll take over? Well, I think, first of all, one thing that we can do to strengthen our faith is guard what we surround ourselves with and guard what we allow to come into our ears and into our spirits because if we listen to the media, the media is so negative. Um, I'll tell you what I do for myself personally. I'm not saying that there's any written code that we should do to strengthen our faith, but, of course, there's nothing greater than the Word of God to strengthen our faith. As I told our daughter today, everything we need is hidden in this Word So we find every faith scripture that you can find and begin to hide it in your heart if you have to post it on your mirror, if you have to put it in your car, whatever. Another thing that I love to do is is listen to just worship music, encouraging music, and fill my atmosphere in my car, in my mind while I'm at home just with an atmosphere of praise because I believe as we praise Him, we welcome Him into our presence. So. Those are two things that I would say are great things to really encourage and build your faith and just guard what you let yourself listen to. I don't even listen to much news nowadays. I probably should, but it's so negative. I just don't want to feed my spirit with it. I want to feed my spirit with what I know works, and that's the Amen. word and worship. So that's my, my two cents on Amen. that tonight. Oh, magnify the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord. Magnify means to make large. Right. So so when you're in this situation right now, what we got to do, as First Lady said, we got to, oh, magnify the Lord. We got to make him large. Amen. We can't make this COVID-19 the, large, the largeness here. We got to elevate him, oh, magnify him. And as we magnify him, COVID-19 becomes something small in our minds. So uh, don't focus on the giants in the land. Focus on the grapes. Focus on the God of the land. Amen. So, so, so awesome instructions right there. Uh, the Word of God, nothing's going to replace the Word of God. You know, our faith groweth, groweth by hearing the Word of God. Um, and so the Word of God, praise. Uh, be careful to whom and to what you are listening to, of course. Um, and I would just say, uh, kind of connecting to that, is surround yourself with positive people. Right. Surround yourself with positive people. I mean, here tonight is... Is Pastor Curtis and Sister Latanya uh, on our production side tonight? And both of those people, if you if you follow those two people, they are they are just positive people. Um, they are positive people. I've been seeing Sister uh, Candy on on Facebook and Brother Curtis using this TikTok stuff. I don't know, but um, you know, I don't know how to do the TikTok stuff. But but the bottom line is that they are enjoying. You know, they're 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 not focused on the negative. Um, and so we need to have people in our life that can make us laugh. We need to have people in our life that can encourage us, not, not pull us down um, to build our faith. And then you got to remember, you know, as I sp- preached many times, you got to remember the bear and the lion, okay? you got to remember the bear that God helped you kill. you got to remember the lion that God helped you kill so that you can kill this giant, okay? So there's been some great victories in your past. You can't look at the giant and how big it is. You've got to look at what God's already helped you do. Amen. So this is a little bit of, a, a little bit of um, maybe good instructions right there. So great question. Great question. Keep going. So do I believe that there is a universal call for we, the believers, we uh, Christians, to basically demonstrate, demonstrate Christ. I personally would say I don't think there's, there has been an opportunity um, to, to shine as we've had this, okay, right now, in my almost 51 years of living. I don't ever recall a time where the country, the world, has been, you know, like this. So I feel like there's never been an opportunity that we have to be the light and the salt, which is what Jesus Christ has said that we are to be. Um, and... I would say let your mind, let the Holy Spirit guide you in regard to that. It may not, ha- it may not be anything huge. You may not have to, to do something just, just way out there to, to do it. I believe we can be light and salt right now just by the words that we speak, the, 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 the countenance of our face, um, our attitudes, okay, um, and things like that. But yes, I do believe that if there's ever a time that we, the church, has been given an opportunity to truly 
demonstrate Christ and demonstrate who we really have been called to be, light and salt, is today. And, um, and so, yeah, I would pray that we would all elevate to a higher level, um, that, that, that we could be the light of the world, um, and very much so. Go ahead. Yeah, I definitely, totally uh, agree with that 100%, because I feel like we now truly is, like I said, the Lord had that scripture in my heart about arise and shine for, you know, your light has come. If we've ever had an opportunity to be a witness and to be a light of hope for Jesus Christ, it is in this day that we're living in, because it is a time of hopelessness. And the part of the scripture that I couldn't uh, remember a while ago, to just, just to tell you, I believe this is, this is right here where we are, where he said, But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. So he said, Lift up your eyes around you and see. They all gather together. They come to you. Amen. So in a time of darkness, what are you looking for? You're looking for a light because you need to know the way. So God is, I believe, asking us as his children to, to arise. Don't put your light under a bush now. Don't let it be hidden by the darkness. You be a city upon a hill. You shine bright that people can come to that light and that they can find hope and they can find the answer that they're Amen. looking for in Amen. troubled times. And when we know, that's Jesus. Amen. People are looking... Uh, maybe not so much for answers, or yes, maybe it is answers to, but uh, now is a time to shine for Jesus. I mean, if there's ever a time that we shine for him, that's why I encourage you, don't go out there and broadcast all the negative and, and fear and, and all of that. Why? Because that's not demonstrating Christ. That's not demonstrating uh, who he wants us to be during this time. Now, I don't mean that to be... Uh, in any way rude when I say that. I'm just saying tonight is that we got to set ourselves apart right now and we got to demonstrate the greatness of God, the awesomeness of God, how powerful He is and that God is so good. He is with us through this. We're going to we are to come out of this thing victorious. Amen. And so I, you, I want you to let the Holy Spirit inspire you to shine for Him more than ever. Pastor Curtis. You might want to ask a question, what kind of makeup does my wife use? I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I don't know what you might want to ask. You know what I'm saying? You might want to ask her how many pairs of shoes she's got. I mean, I don't know what kind of questions you may have. You may ask who my hairstylist is. I mean, questions, I'd be more than glad to answer who my hairstylist is. I mean, just, just any questions you might want to ask, we'll try to answer them tonight. Uh, but as maybe we're waiting on one more question, I just want you to know again that we do love you. We appreciate you. And uh, I just cannot wait to get us all back together. Um, any question yet, Pastor Curtis? Still no questions? All right. All right. Well, we're not going to prolong uh, tonight the service, but I just want to give you an opportunity to do that. And uh, from First Lady, I appreciate all that you said tonight. It was awesome. Thank you so very much. I'm honored to be married to that woman. I truly married up. Uh, whenever I married her, I truly married up. Um, and God blessed me with a wonderful wife. And God's blessed this church with a great first lady. And we love her so very much. And uh, once again, thank you to Pastor Curtis. And tonight, um, Pastor Curtis and just Sister LaTanya um, was able to be on the production side. Thank you all so very much. You got one question? All right, one question. I'm a little bit nervous now. Let me see. <laughs> one final question before we say good night. Ah, that is a, a great question. So I'll let First Lady go first, and then uh, I'll, I'll finish up. Oh, that's, that's tough. It's, well, I think, too, being leaders in the midst of, of a crisis is probably one of the most challenging things because you want to make sure as a leader that you do what's right, and sometimes people look to you 
uh, for answers, and we sometimes are looking for answers ourselves, and that that's probably been one of the most challenging things because we want to make sure we lead you as the people in the right direction, that we do what is best for you. Um, and then on a personal level, I think it's just just the conveniences and the normalities of life, things that I didn't realize how much I took for granted. And the one, the biggest thing is to just be able to come to the church house with, with God's people, that we don't realize how important of a freedom that that is. And I think we take that for granted. And it's made me realize what life could possibly be like without those freedoms. And that's not something that, that I want to experience. So that has definitely been... A challenging thing I guess that's a broad question that I could go a lot of directions but those are the two things that definitely come to mind tonight that have been most challenging and difficult for me in this time yes yeah, so that is a really a great question and you know me uh, for 22 years now I'm very honest and very transparent you know don't underestimate uh, leadership just in general the the heaviness that comes with that but then when you throw a crisis on top of that, then, then the load gets even multiplied, multiplied, multiplied. And so I say that for several reasons because I want us to pray for our leaders, not, not just church leaders, but our city leaders, our state leaders, our national leaders. Pray for those folks. You don't have to like them, but pray for them, okay, because they, they are under a tremendous load. And so I say that because uh, it, it has been a definitely an enhancement of stress to Pastor Derek um, because I feel very responsible for you, okay? I feel very responsible for you getting as, as much as possible and getting to you in the most uh, best way we can give it to you uh, in, in an excellent way, uh, in an anointed way. Um, so it's added more stress, you know, just, just making this all come to pass. The production team, the music team, the youth and all that has made it so much easier. The whole team that we have, um, that we have here has made it so much easier. But still extreme stress on me to make sure it all comes together, to make it happen. So the stress level has been higher um, without any question. And then I'm also going to say I think the stress level of sermon preparation um, it has been higher as well. Because this is a, this is a time that you, you really want to bring to the table something that's going to be uh, very beneficial and helpful for them where we are right now. So you really feel, uh, at least I do, I feel very heavy uh, in my sermon preparation, uh, making sure that I'm, I'm doing, my, doing what God would have me to do. And then, of course, just the bottom line, you know, uh, in regard to your people, not being able to be with your people, not being able to see your people, not being able to go take care of your people. Like Sister Elise, uh, I was able to go see her one time in the hospital. Um, and, and so, you know, that's just, uh, I just love being with my people. I love taking care of my people. And I'm not able to do that right now. Um, but other than that, you know, things are, things are well. I've been trying to keep a good attitude. I've been trying to stay focused, trying to stay positive. Uh, that's, of course. But to me to sit here in front of this camera and tell you that this hasn't created more of a stress uh, on pastor to make this as what we can make it and pull us through this. And so we'll come out stronger. Um, I would be, I would be not telling you the truth. So I do desire your prayers as we continue to move forward. We got another question. What do you say to a person that just got saved, but now they can't enter church? What, where do they turn? So the question is, uh, what do we say to a person who just got saved, but yet they don't perhaps have a church to go to now? Well, that's when you really need to become that, that uh, mentor, that person of support, that, that bridge between you know, them and church. So you need to become that, that very much strength to them, okay? And so you need to maybe attend an online service with them, potentially, Maybe even invite them to your home um, if, if you feel comfortable in doing that so that you can be in service together, okay? Or maybe you hold a, a Bible study with them, you know, maybe through Zoom or just by a phone, phone or however. But so I think we need to become, learn how to become the bridge to those new converts right now and really help them during this time. 
Um, so what do you say to them? You don't really say anything to them other than um, you, you just keep them encouraged. You let them know that, um, that uh, you're there for them. And I'd say you take the lead in, in keeping them uh, connected to the church, okay, or to um, the body in some way, shape, or form. Do you want to add to that? Or? No, that's okay. great. Yeah. Anything else, Pastor? That's it? All right. All right. God bless you tonight. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, the, the comments and the thoughts from, from First Lady. Hopefully I, I was, yeah, I was able to say something to strengthen you as well. And then, of course, the little bit of question and answers tonight. I miss my hugs. Uh, <laughs> I just want to wrap my arm around but that camera and tell you how much I love you. God bless you. We love you. We'll see you back on, on tonight is Wednesday. We'll see you back on Sunday morning. Looking for another great time in the Lord on Sunday morning. Invite some more people to attend our services. Um, also, too, when we get finished here, hit share. Share it with your family. Share it with your friends. That is a way we can carry the gospel out. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed night. Good Take night. care. Bye-bye. A church that promotes the bond of unity among diversity. A church that serves all generations. A church that values the family. A church that lifts praises to God. church that elevates your destiny and not your history. A church that teaches God's Word. A church that builds relationships through fellowship. A church that's excited about meeting you.